The small town of Seadrift, once a thriving fishing community, is now almost entirely dependent for employment on the chemical plants that dominate the nearby countryside. Diane Wilson, a fourth generation fisherwoman, began her struggles with the petrochemicals industry in 1989 when she found out that her tiny Texas community was responsible for nearly 17% of the nation's pollution, discharging over 450 million pounds of toxins into the air, land, and water. There is nobody that works harder than a fisherman or a shrimper or an oysterman. It is very hard physically work. And it used to, you can make a living at it. And there's no living at it, and it's just frustrations, you're constantly on the alert for your violating the law, game wardens, you know, and, and all, I, I know there was one fisherman in town and he had uh, started, I guess he got so desperate that he took out a net and, and nets are illegal, and so he went uh, net fishing again and he and his son got thrown in the penitentiary and they've been in there about three years. The penitentiary for fishing this is what happens when the fishing dies. The community's dead, the, the businesses are gone, there's nothing for the kids to stay for. Back then it was more money shrimping than, you know, any other job you could get. Back when I was, oh, I'd say 30, 35 years old, a, a shrimper was considered a high class person. Nowadays they're not. They're low class people. So Dan, why are you why are you doing this? Well, like I said, I've been a fisherman all my life and I'm especially bonded to the water. And in nineteen eighty nine the, the toxic relief inventory came out, made by Congress right after Bhopal and because of Bhopal. And this industry for the first time ever had to report the releases. And it was, uh, it was front page headlines. It said uh, Calhoun County was the number one uh, county in the nation for toxic disposal. I was so surprised by it that I, uh, I just called a meeting in town. And uh, people went crazy when I called the meeting. You know, I had, uh, I had Chamber of Commerce down at my doorstep, down at the fish house. I had bank presidents. I had the plant manager. I had city council down there, and they ne they did not want me to call a meeting. They didn't want me to do anything. They wanted me to just be quiet. And, you know, and that's the type of uh, stuff I would get. You know, and even when I tried to, uh, I was looking at the uh, cancer statistics, I had the American Cancer Society out of Victoria, one of their head people, come down to Sea Drift on the sly, nobody seeing him. He didn't want to go in the cafe where people could see him. And all he tried to do was talk me out of doing a uh, cancer study, a health study. And it was like, nobody will take it serious. They'll rip it to pieces. You're wasting your time doing that. And this is the American Cancer Society. And uh, two weeks later, his picture was in the paper with uh, Victoria Economic Development. And when problems start happen happening and you start having bad press, suddenly they're buying computer systems for the police department. They're buying police cars. They're buying defibrillators for the ambulances. They're buying typewriters for the churches and the libraries. They're putting their little coloring books in the elementary schools where my children sit. They have taken it over. If people do not believe that corporations have taken over America, then they need to come down a little small town, Texas, and just check it out. As one of his first actions as governor, George W. Bush appointed three petrochemical industry leaders to key environmental posts, where they subsequently gutted environmental regulations on those and other industries. By 2002, Texas, which boasts the largest concentration of refineries and chemical plants in the country, was also the nation's leader in toxic releases, chemical spills, ozone pollution, carbon dioxide emissions, clean water violations, and the production of hazardous waste. The goal of zero discharge, written by Congress, is that by 1985, there would be 
no contaminants into the water. But the reality is, you know, there's a chemical cocktail out there. You got benzene, and you got chloroforming, you got acrylonitrile, and vinyl chloride, and chloroform, and copper, and lead. It can cause liver cancer and brain cancer. It can uh, damage fetuses. It can cause spontaneous abortions. And the goal by Congress, I mean, they're the one that wrote it. These smart men, educated, Harvard educated, it was zero discharge. It has like gone out the window. When I worked at Alcoa, I saw the mercury. I actually saw the mercury trickling through the water, the little silver beads of mercury running out into the bay. When I worked at Carbide, when I worked down at the docks area, we were doing some, some reinstallation of some underground conduits. Uh, the ground was so saturated with benzene that you had to wear protective gear just to crawl into excavation. And we're talking an area that is within uh, uh, 30 foot of the water. I know George W. Bush personally, and he is my friend at the personal level, so I know him as a human being. How do you feel about the environment here, the ecological issues that are... We have a really bad environment, and uh, we had destroyed the environment for the sake of business. But uh, in order to, to fix that, we had to have a lot of money. And I think if we make a lot of money in businesses, we will be able to take care of the environment and the people. <laughs> discharge was the goal of the Clean Water Act 1972 and instead of uh, zero emissions out there we have super fun sites we have fishermen that are bankrupt because of a uh, uh, ecosystem dying out there and my new little business venture is to take what the petrochemical industry has produced and we're gonna bottle it and send it right back to the businessman where it come from Here on the sparkling Gulf Coast of Texas, we produce the richest water in the world. Only here are the fires of industry and the once blue waters of nature finally allowed to come together and create what is quite possibly the most refreshing, energizing, and satisfying bottled water ever created. A rare and delicate blend designed especially for the businessman on the go. A crisp, complex refreshment a state bottle by former fishermen right here in Port Lavaca. Try just one bottle of Texas Gold, and we're sure you'll agree. You'll never drink another bottle of water again. Ingredients. Mercury, benzene, polyvinyl chloride, chlorine, lead, asbestos, ethylene, dichloride, phthalates, and copper. Harmful if swallowed. I've spent my whole life around the water. I've uh, been shrimping since I was eight years old. And even when I was smaller, when I was like four and five years old, my dad would come in from shrimping and all of us kids would go to the bay. And I, I can remember going out in the bay and when you leave her early, you got uh, the spoon bills, you know, these, these pink birds flying, they're coming up out of the marshes and you're going past the reefs and you're heading out into the bay and it was, it was, it was beautiful, and it always kept that, that magic. And I think if I gave up on the bay, I would be giving up on the best part of myself.